Hi, I'm Natalie Trevino with The Ruffian, a pop-up supper club in Corpus Christi, Texas, and you're watching Cook Local, powered by NEC Co-op Energy with Grow Local South Texas. Today on Cook Local, we will be using local South Texas ingredients to make arugula pesto, beet hummus on a beet hummus tartine, and leeks in a leek gratin. This is a leek. These are very dirty little guys. You'll see sand in the root hairs. You'll see sand up in here. So we need to make sure we get all that out because chewing sand is not fabulous. Tips and tops off. I'm only gonna remove about the first three inches of the green. I'm gonna get to the dirt part of these. So I'm gonna remove the green and set that aside because I will wash those. And there's sand all in this, very gritty and that is not great to eat. I'm gonna fill up a bowl of cold water, wash off the tops. So I'm giving these a process, just kind of small. The smaller, the better. And I like to keep the whites and the greens sort of separate. The whites really caramelize. They have a lot of sugars in them and they can really have a great taste. So the Ruffian is my pop-up supper club. It's a pop-up dinner party here in South Texas. And I came up with the idea because I couldn't get a job in a restaurant and I kept taking my resume in and I was getting very frustrated. So my frustration and desperation just came into, what if I just invite people to dinner? So I did. I created a menu that I thought was stellar. And there were leeks on that menu. I did a leek risotto. Throw a dinner party, serve wine, show them like, hey, I love you, let me cook for you. I have my leeks set up here, separated, and I will process the beet tops. So I removed the sweet parts, just because I don't want to stain my velouté. I take the straighter end and I cut them off and then I line it back up again to kind of show it how to act. Roll it on top of itself and then just let my knife do the work. We're going to process our potatoes. Find the center and cut it pole to pole. That way I can keep all my fingers after I'm done chopping this potato. We are not gonna worry about size. And this is gonna be, like I said, sort of a casserole. So you wanna make sure everything fits nicely on a spoon. Now we're going to melt the butter for the first step of our velouté. Half of a stick, which is two ounces, which is four tablespoons. What else? Let's do the math. So we have nice foamy butter here. Add in our whites and green parts of the leeks. Season with a heavy pinch of salt. That will pull moisture out of your vegetables and allow the sugars to caramelize. I learned I like to cook when I would secretly cut an onion. I would put a splash of vegetable oil because that's what I had. And I would cut up an onion really quick, like eight years old, cut up an onion with like a steak knife and I would saute it, and there's like that moment where the, the vegetable or whatever hits the pan and it makes that searing sound, and then I would go to the trash can, like get rid of it, and then like, I wasn't cooking, and then my dad would walk in, and he was like, something cooking? And we would be like, no, because we had just gotten off the bus from elementary school, and I had two brothers to take care of, and I was not supposed to be sauteing vegetables. I was supposed to be watching my brothers. We have some great wilting happening. Butter has coated everybody. They're starting to get soft and weepy. And at this point, I'm gonna add in my potatoes. Coat the potatoes and the fat and the salt and give those a second to sort of cook. Add in those beet greens. Stir them in with love and care. Because that's the first step to cooking, in my opinion, is you have to care about what you're cooking. If you care, everything else is easy. So now at this point, we have the two ounces of butter coating all the vegetables that are in here. And we're going to introduce the flour into the fat and the vegetables. You want to make sure your flour is evenly distributed. There are no white spots. You're cooking out that raw flour taste as well as developing the good bond to make sure you have an even layer of starch to grab all the liquid we're going to add in there. Now that we've cooked the flour in, everything's coated and thickened, we're going to hit it with some vegetable stock, stirring as you add. Switch to a whisk and add in about a cup and a half of milk. And that's how you create a velouté half stock, half milk. So I have some Gruyere cheese. I like to do it in slices. I don't like to grate the cheese because you can bite into these little nuggets of cheese. And they're very nice on your toppings. It smells incredible. And I did a great job. Way to go, Natalie. Now we're gonna decant these into 
our little ramekins. This makes great personal servings. Saucy, delicious. And to top, we're gonna go in with a good layer of panko breadcrumbs. And then I'm gonna douse it with a smidge of olive oil. This will help the bread to toast up. And then we are going to decidedly place these cheese nuggets everywhere. And these are gonna go into a 450 degree oven for about 10 minutes. Hummus is that mysterious product on the grocery shelves that you can totally make at home and you probably have everything except for maybe two ingredients in your house right now to make it. Remove the greens, cut these right in half, super beautiful. Remove the root and the tip and compost. Or my favorite thing to do with vegetable scraps is a stock bag in my freezer where I just stash all my cuttings of onions, carrots, celery, and that all goes in a freezer bag. And when I'm ready to make stock, I just dump it in with water and seasonings and herbs and you're done. They're so pretty. I'm just gonna dress them quickly for the oven with some olive oil and then fresh ground pepper and kosher salt. These are gonna go into the oven at about 400, 450 for about 20 minutes. I have a can of chickpeas and then I have tahini. As long as you have chickpeas and tahini, you can make hummus. Half of these are gonna go into our hummus and the other half are gonna go on top of what we're gonna use our hummus for, which is a hummus tartine. A full can of chickpeas drained and rinsed. So I'm gonna use the thicker ones and the thin crispy ones. We'll save like the medium just right guys for the top of our tartine. A beet in here and a beet right here. Add the tahini, need about a quarter cup. We have some black pepper, which is imperative for taste, salt, and then the juice of a lemon. And we're gonna blend this up Stream in some olive oil to help the olive oil lubricate everything and to help smooth it out. And I like to do garlic separate. I'll just run my knife through this. Don't let your food processor blade be the first blade that your garlic meets. So to finish off the hummus, I like to finish with my secret ingredient, but because I don't believe in secret ingredients, I'm gonna tell you, is ice water. Holding back the ice to really coagulate all those fats and all the proteins to make sure it's nice and smooth without adding extra oil to make it greasy. It looks smooth and perfect. This is such an amazing, show-stopping, very stunning appetizer. Super Bowl snacks, you wanna freak some people out? Like, what is that? Where's the buffalo wings? So in France, a tartine is stuff on bread. So today ours is gonna be beet hummus and top it with some crunchy duca. Duca is an Egyptian topping that's put on salads, on breads, on a variety of dishes. So I have pepitas, which are pumpkin seeds. I have flaked almonds. And then I have some hemp hearts. We're gonna do a tablespoon of white sesame seeds, black sesame seeds. I have ground coriander. Coriander smells exactly like Fruit Loops, the cereal. And it's absolutely wild. So go get some coriander and smell it. And then we have ground cumin, a little bit of kosher salt, about a quarter teaspoon of black pepper. This really great, beautiful seeded mixture will just really pop on that hummus. We have a great piece of toasted bread, our beet hummus. Look at that texture, really nice, really thick. And we're really gonna go for it because this is the protein on our sandwich. Smooth it out edge to edge. We want hummus in every bite. Our other component is gonna be some avocado. Pull out about three or four slices. We'll lay them down and give them a push. Really pretty avocado. And top it with our duca. Make sure we get all the heavy stuff at the bottom and just give it a nice little sprinkle. And that is a beet hummus tartine. And then we have some basil, which is the traditional herb inside pesto. Two cups packed of fresh basil, and I'll use two cups packed of fresh arugula. I'm going to use a third of a cup of pecans, 
and use nutritional yeast. It has a very cheesy flavor. And then I have some Meyer lemons. We're gonna use the zest and the juice. Put the microplane on top of the fruit and I pull. Instead of pushing the fruit over, be in control of all the zest that's coming up and around. So this is gonna go straight into our food processor. Three tablespoons of lemon juice. And we're gonna do a hefty pinch of salt. And then I have a pinch of red pepper flake. Lots of cracked pepper. So let's go ahead and mix. And then we have a couple of cloves of garlic that are gonna go in. And I like to use my microplane when I'm using garlic in a food processor. There's something that happens to garlic when it spins around a blade. It gets very angry and very bitter and harsh. So if you run it over a microplane and get that initial cutting out of the way, it will not be as mean to you. While the motor's running, we're gonna add in our olive oil to create a sauce. Stir this all down, and there you go. A nice arugula pesto with South Texas ingredients. Oh, it's delicious. And it's cheesy, whoa. Thanks for watching this episode of Cook Local. I hope you'll go down to the farmer's market or in your backyards and find some treasures to put into your dishes. Please go out and visit us at the farmer's market and we'll see you there. Happy growing.